everybody, welcome back to the channel. I am Britt, creator of The Style Shaker, your guide to cleaner, greener beauty, skincare, and more. I try these products out for you so you know what to buy, and more importantly, what not to buy. Today I'm talking about a concealer. It's new to me, it's not new on the market, but it is the Juice Beauty Phyto Pigments Perfecting Concealer. I have this little guy in cream. I'm gonna tell you all about it. I'll run through the scorecard to let you know the pros, the cons, and of course my final verdict. So if you're in the market for a new concealer or you wanted to check out more information about this one or you just want to watch and learn about more clean beauty, then stick around and let's get it. Fast. If you enjoy these product reviews and you want to keep seeing more of them, make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and click the bell notification so you never miss a thing. It's just a couple of clicks and they make a huge difference over here, so I really, really appreciate it. Let's dive into the concealer. This is $25 for this tiny little pot, but I'm gonna tell you ahead of time, a little bit goes a long way. There are only five shades available. Ugh. It's supposed to be good for all skin types. Vegan, cruelty-free. This is a glass bottom container, but it has plastic or something. I think it's aluminum, but plastic on the inside on top. And the main claims here are that it helps hide dark circles and blemishes without creasing. And it gives you a radiant, fresh face glow. Do you see it? Do you see the glow? I'm actually wearing the concealer right now, so. I am going to run through the Style Shaker scorecard. If you wanna learn more about what that is, short story is it is the foundation of everything that I test over here. It's the criteria that I base all of my reviews on. There are seven questions and it always starts with, how are the ingredients? It's kind of important, especially with this kind of a channel. It should shock nobody when I tell you that I am not a cosmetic chemist, nor am I a dermatologist. I always advise you to look at the list that I have published back on the site and determine for yourself whether or not the ingredients list looks good to you because beauty is not a one size fits all situation. Overall, the ingredients here were lovely. There is coconut oil, so if your skin gets upset by coconut oil or you break out from coconut oil, then you're not gonna like this one as much. But if not, there's just some really beautiful oils. There's argan, there's castor, the short list, and I could recognize a lot of them and it made me Next up, coverage, and I also wanna talk about finish here. It's supposed to help with dark circles, right? Give you this like radiant glow. It's a lot, a lot for a little thing like this. I will say that this did help with the dark circles. I'll show you how I applied it. Caveat here is I've tried a few different ways to apply it and found the perfect way. Application really matters when it comes to concealer for me. You have to go with the method that works right for your skin. But for me, the brush was like, the best way to do it. I almost wrote it off before I tried the brush. So that just gives you some perspective. You have to give these things a couple of chances sometimes because they might be an amazing product, but you're just applying it in a way that doesn't work with your skin. It's not the wrong application. It's just, you gotta find the right one for you. I have the third darkest, or I guess, yeah, it's the third darkest out of the five shades and it's still pretty light. It brightened really nicely. It covered up those dark circles. It didn't look cakey or heavy either because of the way I applied it. On the flip side, it didn't look shiny because I used such a small amount of it. A little bit goes a very long way. And I thought when I first touched this, that it was going to do the latter. I really thought that it was gonna not sit well and fall into any fine lines, but it melts with the heat of your finger and then you can kind of get it onto the skin if you need to, or it just sort of becomes malleable on the brush too without any additional body heat. So it just kind of like did its thing. I did not have to set this concealer. I usually powder set all of my concealers. It's something I like to do. It works for my skin. Some people really don't like doing it because it looks cakey or they have dry skin. I get it. Again, kind of got to go with what works for you. There's no right or wrong thing. It's just what works for you. I did see a little bit of settling into fine lines, but I will say that there wasn't creasing. And I think again, that has a lot to do with application. So it followed through and overall it got a four out of five on coverage and finish. Does it blend and build well? Mm. This little Ficlo brush, this combo brush, this little half moon end, wow. Just changed the game. I mean, you don't need this brush. You could get one that has that kind of a situation on it, but just a regular concealer brush or whatever. It really helped it blend onto the skin. I have combination skin. I put a little bit of eye cream on underneath because it's a denser product. I thought that that would do well. Sometimes it doesn't, but this time, it was okay. It didn't need a lot of oil underneath or else it would have caused more creasing and settling. It also blended out into the rest of the face. So it's a multitasking concealer, which I happen to love, especially if you just wanna put on a moisturizer and then keep it really natural looking. You can use a 
using concealer to bring it out. This is a little lighter for the rest of my face. I would go a shade darker, but overall it blended nicely and you could build on top of it. I wouldn't build much because it's denser as a formula, but I could build and get more of a pop and more of a brightness. Overall for that, it got a three out of five on the scorecard. The next question is, does it crease? I already alluded to this. I actually did not see a lot of creasing here, you guys. I don't have oily lids. If you have oily lids, definitely prime them with a little bit of whatever you need to do to prime them. But I did not have to set this and I didn't see any creasing. A Little bit of fine line settling into, but I could just sort of press on top. For fine. the Juice Beauty Concealer, it definitely settled into fine lines uh, for me. It certainly stuck around the Actual concealing did not go away underneath the eye and it stuck around elsewhere on the face like I did a couple of spots on the side of the face. Overall, I got a three out of five there. Is it a non-irritating formula? I had zero issues. There is coconut oil. Do check the list. Oh, look who came to say hi. It's personal. You know, what works for me might not work for you, vice versa. For me though, this was fine. I saw no irritation, no watery eyes, no anything. Yay. We got a four out of five on the scorecard. I don't know where that accent came from. I don't know, it just came out of my head. It's been a long day. Now, mm, mm. is there an inclusive shade range? Five shades, no. That does not read inclusive to me, nor to like mm, the rest of the world. They're missing out, like they're missing out on a huge part of the population, which is the problem with a lot of cleaner beauty. I'm not gonna harp on it, but I'll just say it's not inclusive yet. Hopefully they're working on it. I happen to really like this brand. I've liked almost 90% of what I've tried from them and I really just hope they can keep growing and expanding. Right now it's a precarious situation still. When everything's back and running, maybe they'll make more shades. It's not quite hitting it there. Got a two out of five on the scorecard. Plus they're really light shades. Like I already said, the third darkest shade was still very light on me and I'm not, you know, I'm not, really far from fairer skin tone. I'm wearing bronzer, so I look more olive, but yeah, needs help. The last and final question, is it a consciously created product? Is it eco-friendly? Is it not hurting animals? Is it doing all the things? How's the packaging? Yada, yada, yada. Vegan cruelty free. I do not say those things lightly. I say them with passion and excitement, kind of, but I'm really just excited to say those two things associated with this product and this brand. Glass container, I like. However, I'm learning all about stickers and how stickers really mess up the recycling process and how we need to get biodegradable stickers. It's, it's this is also, this does not have refills currently available that I know about. If you guys know something, sometimes you guys know things way before I do, which is not that surprising to be honest. So if you heard something, I'll let your girl know, but right now I don't see refills. So the new rule for 2020 is if there's no refills available, it can't score higher than a two on the scorecard. It's harsh, but that's where I'm at. Got a two out of five. Overall, the score here was an 18 out of 30. It got really dinged on those last two questions for shade range and consciously created product. All right, so we're gonna wrap it up with some pros, some cons, and my final verdict. Pros. There's some brightening happening here in a big way with a very small amount of product. Didn't have to set it. Ah, I love that. Vegan and cruelty free, yes, yes. And $25 budget is very personal. I've seen concealer like this that has been far more expensive. I've also seen concealer that's less expensive, but also the little bit that you use makes me think, wow, this is gonna last for a while. As long as I don't use it past expiration, everything's great. The cons. <laughs> There's a little bit of settling into fine lines. I, you know, it happens with every concealer, so I can't really hold it against this concealer. And application has so much to do with that. I'm still learning how to apply concealer correctly. I have a video on it. I'll put a link below. There are makeup artists out there that do amazing tutorials, far better than mine, to be honest with you. So. Make sure you Google it. You can find so much of that on YouTube. Drier skin types. You might struggle a little bit with this. It's a guess, I'm not sure. Oily skin types, you might actually really love this combo. I'm combo, I happen to really like it. But drier skin types, if you need a little bit of help, definitely use an eye cream, something nice and emollient, and try applying this with a brush or you can use a damp sponge to really help it melt into the skin. I think there's some zhuzhing that can happen. If your skin does not do well with coconut oil, it's not gonna do well. All right, so final verdict. Would I buy this again? I probably would buy this in a darker shade. I actually really like it. I'm a big fan of this. I just wish that there were refills available. If there were refills available, then 
Hands down, yes, no question. The fact that there aren't refills available, it'll make me look around a little bit further to find something that has that. I've never tried one like this and had it work as well and be creamy and yet dense. And it, it was kind of a cool formula. I liked working with it. Those are my thoughts on the Juice Beauty Concealer. What are your thoughts? Have you tried it? Are you going to try it? Let me know. Thank you so much for watching today. If you found this review helpful, then make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and click that bell icon so you never miss another one that comes through. I'm gonna go play with more concealers and I'll be right back here with more reviews real soon. Until then, 